Welcome to Life Passages, The Soul's Journey. Our show today is From Grief to Growth. And we have with us two guests, Shoshana Alexander, an author and teacher, and Julie Lockhart, who is the director of Winter Spring. Um, and please tell us, if you would, Julie, how you describe what Winter Spring is in a nutshell. Winter Spring is about uh, companioning people through the grief process. And our tagline is facing loss, embracing life again together, mm. to really represent that. And we really encourage people to um, embrace, really just face their loss, to mm -hmm. work through it, to move through it, so that they can get to that place where life is, is good again, where they mm. can live fully mm. what they're supposed to be doing in this life. And when you spoke the tagline, that word together jumped out at me, and it seems that that is part of the, the wonderful blessing that Winter Spring brings, is this way to do that journey more together. Yes, yeah. and, and one of the primary ways that we support people is through a group process. Mm. And it's a peer-to-peer -peer model. It's not counseling, it's, it's companioning. Mm -hmm. uh, the work of Alan Wolfelt is really kind of the, the background of how we do things. And we allow the group to bond together and to work together. And in the sharing of their stories, groups are usually about eight weeks, and in the sharing of the stories and the um, support that they get from each other being heard, there really can be a lot of healing that happens. Mm. So it is really a together process. Mm. I, I really believe that the healing power of that. Mm -hmm. And also, I've been over the years impressed with the other form that you sometimes offer, which is a one-on-one -on -one with someone who's been through very much the same loss. Yeah, we can do that too for a lot of people, um, especially if they're not quite ready for a group. Mm -hmm or if there isn't a particular group, like with companion animal loss, uh, we don't actually, we haven't been able to fill a group, so mm. there's one-on-one -on -one support for that kind of a loss mm -hmm. that I think is especially powerful because certain kinds of loss like that are often disenfranchised in our society, which means that people don't take it seriously. Uh -huh. So it's always nice to have, to be in a place where we take the loss and the grief process seriously. Mm -hmm. And to be with someone else who's been through that must be so helpful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very much so. Years ago I had a client who went through a sudden uh, loss of a son and husband through an airplane accident and oh. just uh, found so much help with someone else who'd been through a sudden loss sure. of yeah. the same like a husband and a child. It can make a huge difference yeah. to seek out that kind of support mm -hmm. for people that have been through the trauma of a loss, especially when it's somebody that close. Right. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. And um, I imagine that there's a lot that you could share with us, but we don't have much time, about what drew you to working at Winter Spring what maybe some of your life passages were related to grief, just sure. briefly, and then um, how it's been for you working in that arena now. I wouldn't have guessed ever that I would be doing this. Really? Um, yeah, ten, 10 years ago, 10 and a half years ago, my ex-husband died, leaving me to raise our six-year-old daughter by myself. Mm. And so I was parenting a grieving child, and I was grieving too, even though we had been divorced, it was still mm. really difficult mm -hmm. for me. And I was actually um, the chair of the Department of Accounting at Western Washington University. And I was there, you know, for four years, and it, about the third year, I mean, I'd been there a long uh -huh. time, it'd been my whole career. I just couldn't do it any longer, and I needed uh -huh. to do something different. So I just kind of picked up and moved. I wow. moved to Ashland. Uh, because I had friends here, um, but the grief journey was continuing and really unfolding, and I kind of rediscovered who I was, and then three years after I got here, the job at Winter Spring opened up, mm. and I felt like I'd come home. Awesome. It just really felt right, and one of the things I really love about it is I've learned about my own grief through being there, mm. and it's so healing for me and so um, uplifting to watch people move mm. through their grief process mm. toward that that embracing life again. Mm. It's really very powerful work for me. 
Mm, must be amazing. Yeah. Maybe again and again you find yourself re-entering life even more as you I, I think so. are with people yeah. journeying. In people that way. wonder how I do it, but I, you know, how can you be with people in grief all the time? And I mean, I'm doing administrative and leadership and all that kind right. of stuff too. But I think for me, it's really about, you know, offering my heart to somebody mm. and seeing what shifts for them mm. as a result of the work that we do. Beautiful. It's really beautiful. It feels good to my heart just to hear you speak of it. And I suddenly realized, oh, we're not supposed to put our hands here because the mic, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, and th there's quite an array of programs that Winter Spring offers, and I wonder if this would be a good time to see a video clip about yeah. Winter Spring as a whole. Sure. So we are going to call for the first video clip from the control room to come up, and then it'll help us understand all the varied programs at Winter Spring. It will do some of that, yes. Hopefully. Winter Spring Center, transforming grief and loss. Established in 1989 is a community-based, volunteer-driven organization providing bereavement support services and education to children, teens, and adults in Jackson County. With many specialized bereavement groups and individual support. Oh, I know they loved him. I know they loved him a lot. And they loved me because they loved him. A sense of empathy, understanding, support was from every group member, um, from the oldest to the youngest, the most intelligent to the least intelligent, the most shy to the most social. So I know my heart. He's there telling me, it's okay, Dad. It's okay. People don't realize how much children understand. My dad's name was Jason. He died because he got a stroke. If I'm hurting, my child's hurting, and I need to explain to them what's going on. And so my heart definitely goes out to those kids. It's so sad. It's so sad. And, and to feel what uh, those kids were going through. And within that first night, they came together as, as, as a group of kids that didn't know each other at all and opened up in a, in a way I could have never imagined in the first meeting. Because kids bring um, an honesty to the process. Like I know that, that I'm not the only person on earth that had this happen. Winter spring is the healthiest way to go through it and feels the best. I honestly don't think there is a more relevant or important nonprofit organization than winter spring. And that sounds strange to many people, you know, that grief work is so joyful, but it truly is. It's this chance to go deeper and find out who you really are and what you really, what life really is. Becoming honest with themselves and honest with one another, it's why I do it. A good feeling inside that I can reach out and help others. I can't imagine what I'd be like if I hadn't gone to Winter Spring and hadn't gotten the help that I got. And why were we here? You, were, you know, we're here to, to serve others. So for me, the greatest passion is that I know how wonderful it can be when we've, we've gone through the tunnel, we've gone through the darkness, you know, through the winter, and we come out the other side and it's spring. And I hope, hope you know Though the tears will often flow, I'll be loving you enough to let you go. Thank you so much for bringing that. Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, my goodness. I, I really love how they talk a lot, the folks in that video talk a lot about you know, the kind of moving through the process and, mm -hmm. and the joy that they can find. Mm. Yeah. And children's program, of course, is really close to my heart because having raised a daughter without her dad, mm -hmm. um, it, I didn't know back then, 10 years ago, what to do. Mm. So, it, you know, and I'm sure I made some mistakes. If she's turned out to be lovely um, yes. and she's grown through it, but um, children will go through it kind of over and over again in some ways as they mature and they go through the maturing process. But what happens with the kids in this um, children's program is they find out that it's okay to talk about the person mm -hmm. they lost, 
to remember the person. Mm -hmm. We really focus on remembrance. Beautiful. And it's a very safe environment for them. Mm. And currently we're working with the parents too, educating them on their children's grief as well as their own. Mm -hmm. Because that was really, I think, one of the things about the program that we weren't doing as well as we could. And it's made a huge difference oh, wonderful. in people's lives. We're hearing great feedback. And you had mentioned um, that you learned quite a bit about how to be a parent to a grieving child, probably learned it by living I through all that. I learned it by that. living through it, yeah. And what are some of the key things you're thinking are important for parents to be aware of as they parent a grieving child? Kids need to be, need, need to know that they're safe and loved. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they'll feel feel some fear, especially if they've lost a parent and they're worried that the other parent is mm. going to die too. You know, so often it's, it's just about saying, you know, I'm going to do everything I can to be safe and to stay on this planet, mm -hmm. to be your parent. And um, because they know that there's no guarantee. They learn that they at a very it. early age and it's very mm. sad. Uh, I also learned really quickly to set boundaries. Mm -hmm. because that helps like, to keep kids safe. Uh -huh. Well, you know, so if you let them get away with everything because, oh, they're grieving, they, <laughs> that, that really doesn't do them any good. Uh -huh. And it's really better to be really clear about bedtime and, you know, what they're eating and how they're treating you and all that kind of thing. So good. those are really important things, keeping them close, being honest about what happened mm -hmm. in age-appropriate words and setting boundaries. Mm, mm -hmm. Good good pointers because what an unknown territory sometimes totally people are thrown into. Yeah, definitely. And grieving oneself as a parent, how does one successfully help a child? Yeah, mm. I, it's really important for the parents to take care of themselves too. Mm. And so a lot of the parents, now that the parents and children's program are also kind of sitting together and getting some education and, and sharing their own stories, they're getting support as well. And a lot of them will take other groups as well. Oh, good. You know. Yeah, great. And uh, we have a clip of your daughter speaking about her grieving process. And I also wanted to honor Shoshana, who's here, who's taken two of the winter spring groups, been involved in two of them. So I don't know what order do you want to. Well, Shoshana, yeah, let's hear from Shoshana. Bit. Well, we're right on this. Okay, well, we'll start. Emma. Okay, yeah, we'll do this first. Emma okay, that's good. Okay, Great. sure, that's good. So we would like uh, the control room now to bring up the clip of Emma, mm -hmm. Julie's daughter, talking about okay? her process, Emma, her you, journey. You lost your father. Uh, what was it like to experience death as a child? Well, it was really hard to grieve as a child because the mental process was much less back then, mm -hmm. and. I just remember days where I wouldn't know why I was crying, but I'd be crying all day long. One thing that I do remember, though, is that I would sit and just wish that it wasn't real and someone was playing this evil prank on me. Wow. Yeah, and how has that changed now, now you're a teenager and you're a volunteer with the program? How, is that, how does it affect you now as a teenager? Well, it's been nine years. I've figured out how to empathize with people so and it's much easier for me to relate with others but sure. I've also had to reprocess my grief and go through things that I couldn't go through as yeah. a child. No, it's totally understandable and, and why, uh, why did you decide to volunteer with Winter Spring to help kids go through that same process? I volunteer because it's really hard for adults to understand how kids grieve and I feel like I know more about that. Any help you can give, it's wonderful. Wow, well, thank you for bringing that as well. Yeah, one of the things I love about her story, of course she is my own kid, but um, just how much she has learned to embrace life. Yeah. And through the support group that we got her into when we first moved here, the teen support group at Ashland Middle School, she was uh, able to learn a lot more about the social skills she needed to develop, and it really did change her life to be in that group, and she'll talk about that mm. quite a bit. Mm. But she's just really very much alive, very much living fully, and mm. certainly there's times when she grieves still, uh, and, and mostly she's doing really well. Beautiful, and I love that living fully ethos embedded in the winter spring program it sounds like you were saying a very important part of it from your point of view is encouraging people though they're moving through grief to embrace living fully yeah 
Yeah. Don't you think that their loved ones would have wanted That's that? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Exactly that. Uh, and, and, and they're not going to be there, you know, when it first happens or maybe even the first couple of years after it happens. But there is that opportunity at some point to create new life, mm -hmm. to, to find out who you are after the loss. Mm. Sometimes it's dramatically finding out who you are. Like if you were married to somebody for 50 years and they die. You mm. have to really, mm. really work at who am I now that I'm alone? Exactly. Um, and or or somebody loses a child. Who am I now that I'm not a parent to this person, this child? Right. Um, some of it's much more dramatic than others, but uh -huh. um, you know we really do need to learn who we are afterward. Exactly, and it strikes me, listening to some of what people have said on the footage you brought and what we're saying here, that this deep journey that people are able to go on maybe especially with the help of winter spring to discover the truth of what is inside in the way of feelings mm -hmm. who they really are must be a doorway to, to fuller living in the end ultimately a lot of people that have been through our program say that one of our board members who started in our program says that mm -hmm. that very thing it's a mm -hmm. doorway mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let's find out from you Shoshana how the winter spring programs perhaps have been a doorway for you and I know that one of the programs you were very involved with, you also came in as a facilitator. So maybe you could let us know about the two programs that you engaged in fully and, and what your experiences were. Yes, uh, one point to follow up on this is that I think in the United States we tend to want the pill, right, that will take <laughs> away the pain. Yeah. And it. we like to leap over the process and, okay, now I'm done and I'm ready for that mm -hmm. new me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And that's what I think a huge cultural value is of winter spring, is that it's saying you go through the pain. The way out is the way through. Beautiful. And, um, and that's what carries you to the new life and doing that with support mm -hmm. in community, I think, mm -hmm. which is probably the only way to do it. So the first group that I was in at winter spring was for the survivors of suicide. And um, it was, it had been 20 some years since my sister had taken her life. And um, as I've told Julie before, um, even though I had joyfully raised a child and gone through many different things during those 20 years, I still every day thought about my sister. Mm. Every day often woke up thinking, what could I have done differently? Mm -hmm. What could have happened? and thinking about the trauma and tragedy of that. And when I went to that group, that eight-week group. For suicide? For survivors of suicide okay. loss. For survivors. It was, I mean, one day I realized this is the first time that I have not been thinking almost every hour about my sister. Mm. Wow. 20 years ago, just as Julie said, 10 years ago, what was there to help a person through grief? 20 years ago, what was there for suicide? There were some things, but it was hidden. It was uh -huh. very hidden. It was filled with shame. And they're just, even though there were some programs beginning, they certainly were not obvious, mm -hmm. which is, again, why it's great that Winter Spring is getting out there. Yes. There are now programs, the national program every year for suicide, for those who have lost someone to suicide, a, a, a day event, international, the walk out of darkness, mm, which oh, is another really way helpful. that people in many cities here in Medford um, come together and do a long walk together and you see mm. how many others there are and you're out of the darkness, you're present yes. there. The other um, the other group that I was a part of um, as a participant was after my mother died. Mm. And there's an ongoing grief support group at Winter Spring. And it's just, there's just something really wonderful to go and f share that grief, feel mm -hmm. that together, mm. and know that others understand because they're feeling that. Yes. And then I, then I uh, uh, subsequently led a group for survivors of suicide. Another thing that had helped me a great deal was a book called Unfinished Conversation. Mm. Perhaps we could see yes. the cover Let's of that book. Yes, let's call up uh, from the studio the image of the book. There it is. By, uh, by Robert LeSwan and Marilyn Chappelle. Marilyn's a, a therapist, a psychologist, and Robert wrote this book about the loss of a very good friend of his to suicide. Mm. 
And the book goes chapter by chapter, step by step, through his process um, of anger, of guilt, um, eventually to forgiveness of himself and of his friend. Mm -hmm. But what's wonderful about it is it leads you into the specifics to bring that person alive again. Mm. It asks questions like, what was their room like? Mm. What did they like to do? Who were they? Mm. So that that person isn't defined just by how they died right. in such a tragic way, but by how they also lived. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of a young man that I got to hear from at a circle of young people that had all been on a solo vision quest, essentially. This young man was maybe 17 at the time. And he quested with the, the true desire to connect with his brother who had died when this young man was 14. The brother was 16, they were in an accident. And he described how being out there, and I feel free to tell the story because it's in a film called Lost Borders. Um, so this uh, story that he told about his experience out there, the, the heart of it for him was his brother came to him and said, you will never feel me or connect with me until you're willing to remember me mm -hmm. and remember everything we shared. And I think the truth was this young man had been so close to this brother, they'd done so many things together, that when this trauma happened of the loss, he had shut off his memories of the mm -hmm. older brother. Yeah. And that was just such a turning point for him to be invited by his brother to remember, mm -hmm. to re-engage in all the things they'd shared. It's true about all the kind of losses Definitely, yeah. Yes, that mm -hmm. aspect that you're talking about, yeah, coming remembers. alive again. Mm -hmm. It's to walk through that grief and really walk through it, honor it, be with it, and allow that to bring us to greater life. Sure. Yeah, and some people might fear that in the walking through it, it might eat them alive or take yeah. them apart. And, and it can you feel say like anything that, about that? That is the biggest fear, okay. yes. Right. Oh, yeah. Which oh, is why it's not the, easy. Which is why the support right. uh -huh. is really important. Yeah. Yes. But the way I see it, the purpose of life is life. And death serves that, right? <laughs> okay. One way That's or right. another. It takes us deeper. Mm -hmm. am, mm -hmm. Well, and it allows life to go on. If we didn't have death, we wouldn't have... Uh, we wouldn't we wouldn't have the compost that feeds the new life so it's just a part of that circle but as humans we have a hard time allowing that mm -hmm. circle to take and maybe place. especially in this culture in I know there's some cultures yes. which the whole culture will grieve and keen and cry and wail together mm -hmm. that's not the model here it's not. it hasn't been and I love that winter spring is perhaps one of the places in the forefront of bringing in a new model, a saner, a more loving model sure. of embracing that journey definitely. with others as well We're as definitely. within ourselves. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, yeah, and, and I think for you too, Shoshana, there's a big emphasis in your life on really taking our lives and using them. <laughs> Right you know. way, you just named the title of a performance piece that I have been working on for some time. Um, it is called Taking Our Lives with the Play on Words, and it's about suicide and choosing life. Mm. Um, and this is suicide both active as well as passive. We can commit passive suicide and what is that, by not would you totally say? embracing our lives, by holding back, ah, by giving in hiding. to fears, by mm -hmm. saying, what right do I have? Mm -hmm. I think every person has a special calling, or maybe several, mm -hmm. and it's to respond to that and mm -hmm. say, that is how I contribute to life. Right, to that's, be the fullness I'm here to be. That's maybe. my way mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. taking life. Beautiful. And I think that those who come close to that, have something to tell us. So the, the performance piece also includes a veteran, a Beautiful. military veteran who came close to taking his own life. And as we know, there are now uh, 23 a day of mm -hmm. veterans. Our culture is really facing yes. suicide. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, and a Native American, mm -hmm. especially among Native American youth, That's there's right. a lot of suicide. Right. And in young people, I just mm -hmm. want to say this statistic, between young people between 10, to, 10 and 24, mm -hmm. suicide is the second leading cause of death. Mm. So 
being open about it, knowing that it's there, and paying attention when anybody mentions how they're feeling, mm. coming in with support, calling mm -hmm. the suicide hotline, and asking, how can I support? And I think we have the phone number that the control room has it yes. for the suicide prevention hotline. I don't know what sure. they call it. Is that yeah, what they call it? Something like that, yeah. yeah. Suicide hotline. It's yes. a, a national yeah. one. A national one. Yeah. Yeah. So and we'll it, hope that they put that up for us. Well, and one of the and things, we have very short time now, two minutes, yeah, three minutes. I, I was just going to say so we'll that, be in that, that a lot of times people mode. might even feel like taking their own life after they've had a death, um, this especially is true. a suicide loss in their family or loved ones, yes. but other deaths too. You know, there's that kind of intensity of grief that people mm -hmm. feel like they think it would be easier mm. to die rather than mm. to live. And this is one of the things I think we worry about most with children and teens, mm -hmm. if they don't have an outlet for expressing their grief. Okay. Really important. So a good way to forestall that is to get those situations in place where they can express yes. and share. Healthy expression really yeah. makes a difference in healthy choices later in life. And, I'm, and I, when you say healthy expression, I think of the ways in which creativity are so helpful. Uh -huh. Creative expression, whether it's singing, poetry that one might write, journaling, collages, yeah. tearing up paper and Sure. Throwing it away. <laughs> sure. My daughter writes poetry. It's mm -hmm. really quite beautiful poetry, mm -hmm. but that's one of her ways of expression. It's yeah. really beautiful. And then in terms of self-care, as one is going through grief, perhaps nature for some people represents sure. a place of nurturance and mm -hmm. sustenance. Always take good care of yourself if you're grieving. You know, eating well, trying to get sleep, you know, not doing yes. drugs and alcohol because those habits, you may, you may get into habits and addictions and you don't can't, then you can't break them. So it's really good to, to take care of yourself mm -hmm. really well when you're going through that, mm -hmm. that deep grieving process. And it may be very hard to ask for help at first in a grieving process, and sure. yet maybe one needs to have others present, whether winter, spring, sure. or family members. Friends. But if they look at our website, winterspring.org, there's lots of resources there good. so they can tiptoe in yeah. and, and see what's read there. some things, see what's there, and mm -hmm. then decide if they want to go further. And maybe they mm -hmm. could give a call, and then in talking, they could find out, is this would it be better for me to do a little one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. time there or do the group? And, and we also have a counselor referral list with people beautiful. that we know do grief. Good. So Good. that's also very helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we are to one minute, so I love what you just brought forth here for people to think about the ways that they can uh, contact Winter Spring for mm -hmm. assistance. And anything you want to say in completing, Shoshana? I think just that knowing in the process of grieving that what life is asking for is for each of us to be alive. Good point. I think that's how death also shows us take life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's lives. precious. It is precious. <laughs> One day we all come to the end. That's right. So let's live the lives that we're here to live. And uh, thank you for joining us on this very important episode of Life Passages, The Soul's Journey. It touched on those things that really are part of all of our lives. Um, losing those that we love and coming to the completion of our own life. And may we live our lives with great fullness and uh, wishing you well on your journey. Take care, be well, and thank you to all our crew. And